Hey guys, today we're going to talk about DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. It's quite a big topic. I'll be surprised if some of you, if not all of you, haven't experienced it from time to time. We're talking about that uncomfortable feeling of soreness, stiffness, you know, pain, frank pain, to be honest, which actually impairs your performance days and days after you've done, you know, a particularly hard session. Now, it is true that cycling doesn't really stimulate muscle soreness to the same degree as, let's say, weight training or, you know, running. But for triathletes out there or anyone who's pushing themselves hard, yeah, it's an, it's an everyday phenomenon. However, this is an area where there's a lot of misunderstandings, myths, if you like. I want to go through them briefly in, what, five to ten minutes to see if I can cover some of them. Personal declaration here, I am suffering severe DOMS today, having not trained for a rather pathetic 5k park run. You know, I used to do 5k, 10ks all the time, but having left it for months and months, returning to that 5k and running a, let's say, tempo, has caused me quite severe DOMS on day one, mild, day two, moderate to severe, day three, mild again, and day four, nearly gone. I can tell you what I've done to combat it, but I'll also tell you here what the evidence shows from some well-known authorities around the world, like Professor Ken Nasaka, who's done a lot of studies in this area. So why don't we start with a few myths, guys, and uh, here's an old school myth for you, that DOMS is related to lactic acid accumulation. Well, we can put that one completely to bed now because we've known for 20 or 30 years that lactate is actually part of the energy shuttle system, a kind of transitionary shuttle between aerobic and anaerobic, completely vital to normal muscle physiology. Nothing really to do with muscle pain or fatigue. Yes, lactate correlates with the amount of work being done and lactic acid isn't the natural forms so we can consider lactic acid as nothing to do with doms in fact lactate and lactic acid is pretty much cleared you know within hours of the exercise anyway so that's pretty much nonsense i have to admit however that the actual mechanism of doms isn't really known other than perhaps a second myth that is due to micro tears in the fibers themselves we pretty much know that it's related to a lot of pre-existing risk factors. I'd say the big one is not being sufficiently prepared for a really hard exercise. You know, an exercise that ends up stretching the muscle more than it should be. So they call that eccentric muscle contraction. Eccentric rather than concentric activity, which basically means lengthening the muscle excessively is the what really gets you. I think over the last five to 10 years, what's been shown is that it's really probably related more to excessive stretching and micro damage, a little bit of micro damage in the fascia. It's a kind of stimulus or message that the fascia is getting to say, hey, we need to adapt to this and grow stronger next time. I need to make adaptations. There have been some interesting studies by Ken Nasaka where he's put um, a probe or an acupuncture needle directly into the muscle and found that it was fascial stimulation that caused most of the problem. So myth two is really the sense that it's related to muscle damage. He's saying that actually in most activities only 1% of muscle fibers are typically damaged. So it's probably not related to that. Further we can also say that muscle damage doesn't really correlate with the degree of improvement or stimulus for change. So that no pain, no gain line that we hear so much is pretty much nonsense, I think. Um, yeah, there is somewhat of a correlation between discomfort during an activity and ultimate gains. Obviously, no discomfort is very rare with hard activity. But it doesn't have to be severe pain, it doesn't even have to be moderate pain if you are sufficiently prepared. Okay, if we don't know what causes it, that doesn't mean to say we can't do anything about it. There are lots of things where we don't know the cause, but we can still do something about it. And a big one that we hear again and again, particularly in running circles, 
is that stretching is vital before or after. Now we could do a whole episode just on stretching, but basically in terms of effect on DOMS and pain and discomfort and even even weakness afterwards, I think we can put it pretty conclusively to bed that stretching doesn't really make a difference, i.e. it doesn't help either before or after as far as we can tell. But here's the thing, guys. I don't want to just shout out a series of things that might or might not work. We've really got to go to the evidence here. Fortunately, a good study, very good study, in fact, has just come out. 2018, and that is by Dupoy. It's in Frontiers of Physiology. You can see it here. An evidence-based approach for choosing post-exercise recovery techniques. Basically, what helps muscle damage, soreness, fatigue, and inflammation a systematic review, and they go through pretty much everything up to 2018. It's an impressive list of studies that they've actually reviewed, although the total sample size might not be very large. In essence, I think it's 99 studies, 80 for DOMS, around about 1,000 participants, various experimental groups, uh, multiple methods of study. Yeah, it is a little bit complicated, but we can check out the effect on DOMS in this table. So what works and what doesn't work? Let's cut to the chase. Well, let's start with the things that don't really work. Heat treatment doesn't really work. Ultrasound, electrical stimulation, most supplements, any kind of mm, antioxidants. You know, those are things that don't really work. Things that might work to some extent, well, There are a few supplements that seem to work, but the number of studies is very, very limited. For example, protein supplements, yeah, probably work, especially if you're protein depleted after your activity. You know, that's the case if you've not been absorbing enough protein. When your protein needs are high, you should replace them. Okay, that's common sense, but, you know, it can't hurt. There's a few studies looking at curcumin, Uh, the active ingredient of turmeric. However, it's not necessarily active in the muscle. It's more active in the gut. There's a big question over bioavailability, bioavailability. And it does, in some animal studies, prevent muscle growth and capillary growth. So it could be the case it does help, but it actually harms as well. A similar story could be made for caffeine. Yeah, it probably does help with soreness and return to function but it might have some negative effects as well. And there are one or two studies on glutamine supplements that might work, but the quality of those studies is very poor. So really, we're down to just a handful of things that either affect muscle soreness or fatigue. And one of them is cold immersion, either whole body or just the region that is under most duress. That has been shown to work in a number of studies. You can see it here. Although the sample size is fairly modest, I would say there's a definite effect. Perhaps even more than that, we're talking about massage, therapeutic massage. Okay, it's in the hands of the masseuse. How good it is, you can supplement it by a foam roller. Foam roller studies are... I'd say fairly convincing, although the effect is mild to modest. Now, if you're talking about a drug, if you ask anyone in the general population what might affect and improve muscle soreness after an activity, they're going to say non-steroidals, aren't they? are going to say something like brufen. And there's a specific review here, which I will highlight. Morelli's looked at this, and I think the year is 2018, so it's quite recent. Large number of studies, and... Contrary to expectation for some, it actually, non-steroidal supplements, anti-inflammatories, were definitely effective for for both pain, discomfort, and uh, improving function, i.e. reducing fatigue. You know, some people say don't take uh, non-steroidals because animal studies and um, biological studies say they could impair the immune and inflammatory pathway. For example, they might inhibit COX-2, which could actually reduce muscle repair and growth. And it is theoretically possible. But actually, the studies don't seem to show that. That's what I'm trying to say here. That I had an open mind about this. I knew there was potentially a problem. 
with excessive use of non-steroidals. And not everyone finds them useful, but you know, overall the literature is actually pretty convincing. So I would say if you're going to take anything, keep an open mind to non-steroidals. And the effect isn't just on soreness. It does appear to improve function as well. It's not a panacea. It doesn't cure everything. If you like, it takes the edge off it. You have to be careful with your dosing. Now, would the same apply to aspirin and salicylate containing drugs? Well, I can't say that hand on heart. And there are problems, you know, with micro bleeding potentially because they can affect the bleeding pathway, i.e. clotting. However, one or two studies do look like they could be potentially effective if delivered in the right way. For example, as a patch, transdermal patch, that could be effective. Check out this study by Hill and Sumida. Sumida. But I think I've saved the best one till last, which is actually a kind of paradoxical one, which is called in the literature active recovery or basically further exercise. So here's the thing, light exercise in a controlled way, not giving the muscle more eccentric, sudden, intense movements, but controlled movements. For example, if you're a cyclist, switch to controlled activity. That might be a spinning bike or it might be swimming. You know, um, I've personally found spinning bike very, very helpful as a recovery. It's definitely sore when you initially do it with severe DOMS, but I use it quite regularly now for DOMS after running. So the literature on this is fairly convincing that steady controlled exercise does actually help your recovery, speeds up the recovery and reduces the pain subsequently. So this is something I would recommend. You have to do it in a controlled way, carefully in other words. And um, you know, there's good literature here saying that it doesn't exacerbate muscle damage and it doesn't decelerate um, gains and it doesn't impair repair. So that's all good. So let's quickly summarize, guys. Relating to DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, is a pretty common phenomenon. A lot of people choose to gut it out and continue, which is probably a mistake because you shouldn't go too intense. But doing nothing is also a mistake because basically you're getting further days of deconditioning. It's not really a reflection of muscle tear or muscle fiber tear on a deep level. It's probably related to multiple pathways that we don't fully understand, but relating to the fiber or sheath that surrounds the muscle, the fascia, more than the muscle itself. I wouldn't be scared of DOMS, but it is a sign of being slightly underprepared. So preparation is the key in prevention. Prevention is probably better than cure, isn't it? Always, if you're talking about treatments, none of them are fully effective. General supplements, heat, stretching doesn't really work. Only a handful of things seem to work. And they are massage and foam rolling, cold water immersion, compression clothing to a very small extent. But I'm not sure that's more than psychological. Uh, Non-steroidals to take the edge off it and active recovery doing something. So my bottom line advice is take it easy, prepare for your activity. When you've done your activity, look at your recovery in a holistic way. If you need protein supplements, do that. Eat a healthy diet get your sleep back, try to get yourself on a pathway of recovery, but start light, gentle exercise in a controlled way as soon as possible. And that way you get onto the road to recovery sooner rather than later, guys. Okay, guys, that's my heads up primer on DOMS. I hope that was useful. As always, check me out on social media. See you in the next video, guys. If you want to post any questions or you have any suggested topics, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Take care. See you around.